All right, section 5.3 will be the binomial probability distribution. In this section, we're going to look at basic definition of a binomial distribution along with some notation and methods for finding the values of probabilities. Binomial probability distributions allow us to deal with circumstances in which the outcomes belong to two relevant categories such as acceptable and defective, survived and dead. We call these two categories typically success and failure. Do not let the word success convey a positive connotation. Success is just whatever event that you're interested in studying. Success is whenever that event happens. So if you're studying, let's say, the death rate in a hospital, the morbidity rate due to nosocomial infections, those are infections that you pick up in the hospital, then what you would call a success in that case would be a death. Well, typically we think of death as being a bad thing, but if that's what you're studying, then we would call a death a success. And a failure would be the good thing, and that is not dying. But the main thing that you notice is there's only two outcomes here. In order to have a binomial distribution, these four conditions must be met. First of all, you have to have a fixed number of trials. The number of trials, we're going to let n represent the number of trials that we have. The trials must be independent of each other. That means the outcome of any one trial doesn't affect the probability of other events in that trial. The third condition is that each trial must have all outcomes classified into two categories, either success or failure. And finally, the probability of success remains the same for all trials. If all four of these conditions are met, then we have a, a binomial probability distribution. So in this problem here, I want to ask you, are those four conditions met in each of these? Can we use probability models based on the Bernoulli trials to investigate the following situations? A Bernoulli trial is what they call trials where these last three conditions are met. These are Bernoulli trials. You don't have to worry about that terminology. I gave you that for free. That came from another book, but those last three conditions satisfy a Bernoulli trial. First of all, you're rolling five dice and you need to get at least two sixes to win the game. Does this represent a binomial trial or binomial distribution? Could we use a binomial distribution to model this thing? Well, there's four things we have to check. First of all, do we have a fixed number of trials? No, we don't know how many trials it's going to take. We're just told we need at least six. It could go on and on forever, theoretically, before you get two sixes. There's not a fixed number of trials. So therefore, this is not binomial. We record the eye colors found in a group of 500 people. Do we have a fixed number of trials? Yes, the 500 people. Are the trials independent of each other? Yeah, the people, unless they're Siamese twins or something, they're, they're independent of each other. We're not going there. You know, don't, don't stretch your imagination that far, whatever you're doing statistics, or you'll drive yourself crazy. We do have independence here. Are there only two outcomes? No. There's more than two outcomes. Therefore, this is not binomial. All right. A manufacturer recalls a doll because about 3% have the buttons that are not properly attached. Customers return 37 of these dolls to the local toy store. Is the manufacturer likely to find any dangerous buttons? Does this represent a binomial trial? Fixed number of trials? 37 dolls. Independent? Each doll is independent of each other. Are there only two outcomes? Defective and not defective, right? Does the probability of success remain constant? 3%. This is a binomial. Part D, a city council of 11 Republicans and 8 Democrats pick a committee of four at random. What's the probability that they choose all Democrats? The fixed number of trials? Four. Uh, independent? Uh, I don't know. We'll come back to that because this is going to fail on another one that's more obvious. Only two outcomes? Yeah, only two outcomes. What about the probability remaining the same for each trial? That probability does not remain the same because the probability of selecting the first Democrat is going to be 8 out of 19, but the probability of selecting the next person to be a Democrat is 7 out of 18. This is a small sample size. We can't assume that we have a independence here. All right, we cannot assume that we have independence with such a small sample size, and therefore the probability of success is going to change for each trial. 
We have discussed this concept in a previous section. I think it was in 5.2. Part E, a 2002 Rutgers University study found that 74% of high school students have cheated on a test at least once. Your local high school principal conducts a survey in homerooms and gets responses that admits to cheating from 322 of the 481 students surveyed. Do we have a fixed number of trials? Yes. Do we have independence? Yes. Do we have only two outcomes, cheat or not cheat? And do we have a fixed probability? Yes, we do. This one is binomial. On your test, I will put questions on there where I ask you, I'll give you scenarios like this, and I will ask you, is, does this represent a binomial trial? And your choices will be yes, it does, or no, because this, no, because that, no, because something else. You've got to pick the right reason why it fails, which means you need to know the four conditions that must be satisfied in order to have a binomial distribution. Usually when a teacher writes something down, it's pretty important. The notation that we're going to use for binomial distribution S, we're going to call a success. F, we're going to call a failure. Seems kind of logical, right? This denotes the two possible categories for all outcomes. P is the probability of success. Q is the probability of failure. Because there are only two outcomes, the complement of success would be failure, right? The probability of the complement is 1 minus the probability of the event. Notice how that all stays consistent throughout the course. It's one of the things I like about mathematics. It's consistent. The notation, N denotes the fixed number of trials. A lowercase x denotes the specific number of successes in N trials. So x can be any whole number between 0 and N. It's a specific number of successes. P is the probability of success in one of the trials. Q is the probability of failure in one of the trials. P of x is the probability of getting exactly x successes among the n trials. One of the things you need to be careful of is to make sure that x and p both refer to the same category that you're calling a success. If you get the wires crossed, you're not going to be happy with the results. So when we're sampling without replacement, we can consider events to be independent if the sample size is less than 0.05 or 5% or of the population size. That's why with the dolls we could assume independence because we were just looking at 37 out of however many thousands are manufactured. But with the Democrats and the Republicans, our sample size was much smaller than 5% of the population when we were just looking at that one group. When an adult is randomly selected, there is a 0.85 probability that this person knows what Twitter is. Suppose we want to find the probability that exactly three of five randomly selected adults know of Twitter. So we want to find the probability of three successes. In this scenario, what would the lowercase p be equal to? And lowercase q would be 0.15. Remember, the probability of everything, the sample space, has to be 1. If all we have are success and failure, there's nothing else. So we have the probability of success plus the probability of failure has got to be equal to 1. So does this procedure result in a binomial distribution? Well, there's four things we have to check, right? What's the first thing we need to check? Fixed number of trials, five randomly selected adults, independent. Are these five people going to be independent of each other? We have no reason to assume otherwise. Two categories. What are our two categories? And then the fourth, and what is our probability of success? So this answer to this question right here is a big fat yes. Does the procedure result in a binomial distribution? Yes, it results in a binomial distribution because these four conditions were satisfied. There is a binomial probability formula. This is it. This right here, this part of the formula, is n c x where n is your sample size c stands for combination the button on your calculator and then x is the number of successes that you're interested in these are the total possible ways to get this well what is that 
P of X is the probability of success and Q is the probability of failure for X successes out of N trials. So if we have X successes, we're going to have P raised to the X power and then N minus X is what's left over and the rest of those have to be failures. Am I going to make you memorize this formula? No, that would just be cruel and unusual punishment. I think what the Eighth Amendment protects you from that, so I can't do that. And we can use the NCX on our calculator, but on your calculator, and this is what I'm going to choose to do, is use technology. If you pull up your calculator, or I'll pull up my calculator, you just get yours out. Do you see this button right here that says distribution right above the VARs there? If we sit second distribution and then arrow up, do you see this binomial PDF right here? PDF stands for probability distribution function. So on your calculator, if you hit second, VARs, and then arrow up to which number was it? Mine is A. Yours is zero. Okay, then I'm just going to write this. Depends on the calculator as to what it's going to be, but it is going to say binomial PDF. Then you have to plug in numbers for N, your number of trials, P, the probability of success, and X, the number of successes you're interested in. Now, in your book, 217, there's the steps on how to use the... Um, the TI-8384 graphing calculator in order to get binomial distributions. And I was playing with this. It's kind of cool. All the different things you can do. It does way more than what we need it to do. I'll show you how to use it right here for this sample problem. It says, given there's a 0.85 probability that any given adult knows of Twitter, use the binomial probability formula to find the probability of getting exactly three adults who know of Twitter when five adults are randomly selected. So here we know that in our sample size, our fixed number of trials is 5. P is our probability of success. That's 0.85. Q is 0.15. And X is 3. We want to find P of 3. I'm not going to use the formula. I'm going to use the calculator. So we're going to pull our calculator up. We're going to go to this binomial PDF. And you can just move the cursor up to it. Hit Enter. And the first thing you put in is your number of trials, comma, the probability of success, comma, and then the number of successes that we want. Close the parentheses or not, it really doesn't matter, and there you go. We get 0.138. So that means that the probability of finding three people, exactly three people, who know about Twitter amongst five randomly selected adults is 0.138. I changed the question just slightly. What's the probability of finding at least three people who know about Twitter out of those five? So that means I need to find the probability of three plus four is at least three plus the probability of five. At least three means it could be three or more. So we go to our calculator and there's several different ways we can do this. One way we can do this is find this number. There's the probability of three. We'll store this number in um, alpha A, and then we want to find the probability of four successes, and we're going to store that number in alpha B, and then we'll find the probability of exactly five successes, and we'll store that number in alpha C. So then all I've got to do is add together A, B, and C, and we get point. 973, which seems reasonable. If 85% of adults are familiar with Twitter, the probability of finding at least three adults out of five that know about Twitter is pretty high. Okay, the question was, how did I get this and what did I do with it? Let me show you again. We go to our distribution, so we hit second bars, and I'm going to go up to A, and N was 5, P is 0.85, and x was 3. This is a sample of 5. The probability of success is 0.85 and I want to know the probability of exactly three successes. So we store that then and I just hit the store button right here as alpha a. Then I hit second enter and I do the same thing only now I want four successes. I use second enter so I don't have to go back through all the keystrokes and 
find the binomial distribution again and type in all that information. And then I just type over what I want to change. So this is going to be alpha B, second enter, change the 4 to a 5, and change the B to a C. I'm just using a type over feature of the calculator. So those are the individual probabilities for exactly three successes, exactly four successes, and exactly five successes. If I want to know the probability of at least three, then I need to add those up. So I did alpha A plus alpha B plus alpha C, and that's where the .973 came from. You need to practice using your calculator in order to get comfortable with it, and you'll have a chance to do so when you do your homework. I do have another problem here. It says, suppose 20 donors come to a blood drive and 6% of all people are what we consider universal donors. Universal donors are people with O negative blood. That means that anybody can take their blood. Before we answer this question, does this represent a binomial distribution? Do we have a fixed number of trials? What is N going to be here? 20. Are there only two outcomes? O negative and not O negative because that's what we're interested in. What is the probability of getting two or three universal donors? Those are people with O negative blood. There's only two outcomes, O negative and not O negative. The probability of success is, what are we calling a success? O negative blood, and only 6% of the population has O negative blood. That's 0 0.06. Are our donors independent of each other? Yes, they are. So now the question is, what is the probability of getting two or three universal donors? That means we want to find the probability of two plus the probability of three successes out of the 20. How do we do this on our calculator? You tell me what to hit. Second bars, go up to A, type 20 comma 0 0.06 comma and two. There's the probability of two successes. So we'll call that 0.225. And then what? Second enter is the quickest way to do this. And we change the 2 to a 3. And we get 0 0.086. And when we add these probabilities together, we get 0.311. Do you see why we have to add the probabilities together? This number right here represents the probability of exactly 2 O negative out of 20 donors. And over here, this probability represents the probability of exactly. So the probability of getting two or three would be the sum of those. Or means add and means multiply in the world of probabilities. We have to use a formula for conditional probability if the probabilities are not independent for the and. Know the four conditions for a binomial distribution. Know how to find these probabilities on your calculator.